Now we're going to talk about equations with two variables. Now earlier in the course we solved equations that contained a single variable. Equations like this, x plus 3 equals 8. And it's pretty easy to see in this case that the solution here will be x equals 5. Because if you put in the value 5 in place of this variable x, you get a statement that is true. 5 plus 3 is in fact equal to 8. So we say that 5 is a solution to the equation. We say that the value x equals 5 satisfies the equation. And the equations that we've looked at so far only have one variable like that. But now think about this equation. x plus y equals 7. There we have two variables, x and y. And to solve the equation, we need two numbers, one for x and one for y. We could do this. We could say that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4 because that's a true statement. 3 plus 4 equals 7. So those values, x is 3 and y is 4, those values satisfy this equation. We say that the numbers x equals 3 and y equals 4 are a solution to the equation. But you can probably see that there are other solutions also. We could say x equals 2 and y equals 5 because if we put in a 2 right there for x and a 5 for y, that would also be true. 2 plus 5 equals 7. Or we could say x equals negative 1 and y equals 8 because if we put in a negative 1 and an 8, that's also a true statement. Negative 1 plus 8 equals 7. So how many different solutions are there? I've got three listed here, but there are really an infinite number of solutions. Lots of different pairs of x and y values can satisfy that equation. Now with that in mind, let's look at some examples of some, some little math problems that deal with equations with two variables. Example one we're told find three different solutions to the equation x minus y equals 3. So let's try to write this equation and put in some numbers for x and y such that we end up with the true statement. Well some of this is pretty easy. We could say 4 minus 1 that equals 3 and so we're using the value 4 there for my first variable x and the value 1 for the second variable y. So this is a solution x equals 4, y equals 1. That's one solution to this equation. We're told to find three different solutions, so let's find another. Uh, we could say 5 minus 2 equals 3, so that's another solution, x equals 5, y equals 2. And we could say 10 minus 7 equals 3, so in other words, x equals 10 y equals 7 is also another solution. And you might have come up with some different ones just now thinking it through, but those three are fine. And if you had some different ones, that's okay, as long as they're correct, as long as x minus y does in fact equal 3. All right, here's another example. For the equation x plus y equals 9, we're told find y if x equals 5. So I'm going to write this equation, x plus y equals 9. That's what I'm starting with. Now I'm going to rewrite it, but I'm going to take this piece of information right there and use that piece of information when I rewrite it. When I write this equation again, instead of x, I'm going to use the value 5. So I'll write 5 plus y equals 9. Now think of a number that I could put in right here for y that will make this equation true and you can probably see there's only one number 5 plus 4 equals 9 so y has to be 4 in order for this statement to be true so in other words if x is 5 we put the 5 in there for x then we have to put in a 4 for y so y equals 4 so we're told find y if x equals 5 there it is y equals 4 in part b we're told find x if y equals negative 1. So now we're given a value for y. So let's take this equation again, x plus y equals 9, and let's rewrite it 
but we're going to put in the number negative 1 for y. So a negative 1 is going to go right there. So I'm going to say x plus negative 1 equals 9. Now, what value has to go in there for x in order for that statement to be true? What plus negative 1 is 9? You can probably see that x has to equal 10 because 10 plus negative 1 is in fact equal to 9. So we were told to find x if y equals negative 1. So we took y and put in a negative 1. And we see that in order for that to work, x has to be 10. So x equals 10 is the answer to part b. Now in this next example, we have an equation. It's over here, 3x minus y equals 1. And we're given an ordered pair, 3, 8. So the x value is 3 and the y value is 8. And we're asked, is that ordered pair a solution to that equation? Well, what I'm going to do is take this equation and rewrite it. And I'm going to use these numbers for x and y, 3 and 8. So I'm going to write 3x. I'll, I'll write the equation again right here, 3x minus y equals 1. Now I'm going to rewrite it again, but instead of x, I'm going to use the value 3. And instead of y, I'll use the value 8. So I write 3 times 3. And be careful not to just write 3, 3 like that, 3x, because that looks like 33, obviously. This is 3 times x. So you either indicate that by saying 3 times 3 or parentheses, some kind of notation that indicates 3 times x. And then minus y, we said y is 8 equals 1. So I've taken this equation, 3x minus y equals 1, and I've put in, instead of x, I've put in the value of 3, and instead of y, I put in the value of 8. Now let's work this out. 3 times 3 right here is 9. 9 minus 8 equals 1. That's a true statement. So these values, x equals 3 and y equals 8, they do satisfy this equation. So we say that the ordered pair 3, 8 is a solution to that equation. Okay, one more. We're told find a solution to the equation 4x minus y equals 12. So find a solution. We need two numbers, x and y, to have a solution. So here's what I can do. I can pick any number for x. Any number at all will work. Pick any number for x. And I'm going to rewrite that rewrite this equation with that number. Well, let's just pick a number. I'll say x equals 5. And any any number will do. And then we'll just plug that number in. And by plug it in, I mean rewrite this equation, but instead of the x, I'm going to use that value, 5. So I'm going to write 4 times 5 minus y equals 12. Now let's think about what number we have to have for y right there in order for this equation to be true. Well, 4 times 5 is 20, so I could rewrite this equation as 20 minus y equals 12. And then it's pretty easy to see. 20 minus what equals 12? Well, 20 minus 8 equals 12. If you don't see that, then you can manipulate this according to the rules of algebra that we know. I could subtract 20 from each side, and the 20 and the minus 20 would cancel out, and that would leave me with negative y equals, and on the right I have 12 minus 20, so that's negative 8. And if negative y equals negative 8, then y equals 8. So those are my answers. x is 5 and y is 8. So if I wanted to, I could write the solution as an ordered pair, 5, 8.